Welcome to Three Unit Inequalities. Uh, today's lesson is on quadratic inequalities. So the assumption here is you already know how to solve normal inequalities or linear inequalities. And just a quick reminder in case you know you've forgotten, you deal with it just like a normal algebra equation. Subtract two from both sides, divide both sides by three and you're good to go. Um, however, when you have something like this, you have negative three X on the left side, to get rid of the negative three, you would have to divide by a negative number. So the idea is if you have to multiply or divide by a negative number, you flip the sign. Apart from that, it's exactly the same as a normal algebraic equation. As long as you do the same thing to both sides, you're good to go. All right, solving quadratic inequalities, however, is quite a bit different. Um, there's a special technique. Uh, now, the syllabus requires you to be able to solve inequalities, quadratic inequalities, algebraically as well as graphically. So we'll be covering both. However, you should know that you probably haven't done a whole lot of curve sketching. So solving quadratic inequalities graphically might be a little hard for you at the moment. That's okay, you'll get better, especially when you do polynomials in the extension course and you do some curve sketching in the two unit course. And once you're able to sketch curves, especially quadratics, uh, you'll find this topic will be significantly easier. So I'll, I'll cover the um, graphic solutions in this video, uh, but I will be focusing more on the algebraic one. All right, so we're gonna, uh, when you're solving quadratics graphically, this is what you do. Um, you move everything to the left-hand side, so that whatever the quadratic inequality is, you make sure everything's on the left, on the right-hand side should be only zero. And then you factorize, uh, because once you factorized, then you can graph a quadratic inequality fairly easily. It's very, very easy. And basically once you've graphed it, you can see the solution visually. You just look at the graph and you'll be able to see the solution. And the idea is something like this. Uh, once you've graphed a quadratic inequality, it looks something like this, right? Now, because of our step number one, we, we have only, we're comparing this quadratic inequality to zero. Is it more than zero or less than zero? And the idea is, Anything above the x-axis is more than zero. Anything below the x-axis is less than zero. So, sorry about that. Let's say that is one, and this is like negative five. So for this graph, visually we can see that for x is more than one, the graph is more than zero. And between negative five and one, the graph is less than zero. And Similarly, if x is less than negative five, the graph is more than zero. So we can visually see, we can visually see it. It's very, very straightforward. Solving this quadratic inequality is really easy if you can graph that quadratic. Yeah, it'll be, if it's more than or equal to zero, it'll be above the f-axis. If it's less than or equal to zero, it'll be below the x-axis, very straightforward. So for example, let's say you have that. x squared is more than nine. Step one, we're moving to the left factorize, graph that, it looks something like this. And again, like if, if you know if you know curve sketching at all, you'll know this is really easy to graph. The zero is a three and negative three. It's a, it's a concave up parabola because the x squared is a positive power, x squared is positive. It's concave up. You know, if it, uh, concave up means it'll, it'll be a smiley face. If it starts here and here, it goes through three and negative three, there's no other way you can look. It has to look like this. And once you have that, we, we want to know where it's more than zero. Well, fairly straightforward. Just look at the graph and where is it more than zero? Where is the graph above the x-axis? And clearly it's x is less than negative three. When x is less than negative three, it's above the x-axis. And similarly, when x is more than three, it is above the x-axis. So that is the idea. It's very simple. Now, the key idea, remember, is step one, move everything to the left-hand side. Make sure you are comparing to zero. Example two, let's say we have to solve this. And we're going to one side, make sure zero is on the other side. Compare, compare like that, right? And I've, all I've done is I've just put this to the left-hand side. I haven't actually changed anything here. Zero is more than that. Same thing, zero is more than this, or this is less than zero. Same thing, really. Factorize, graph. Again, you know the zero is very straightforward. Where is it less than zero? Between negative two and three. I mean, we can see where is it below the x-axis? Between negative two and three. 
All right, so I'm going through for quadratic inequalities algebraically. I'm going to go through one question, explaining as I go along, and I'm going to slow down now because we are solving algebraically, and this is something probably new. You probably haven't done something like this before, so I'll slow down a lot. Okay, so example one. Let's say we had to solve that inequality. Okay, now step one, we start by factorizing, as in the previous method, we factorize. Now we know what the zeros are. Now the zeros, they are, they're not solutions to inequalities, but they are critical values. And if you know from the graphical method, I'll, I'll just explain really quickly why they're critical values. You know, the zeros will be three, and negative two, so let's say that's negative two and that's three, and that's a positive, I'm, and I'm doing it graphically, I just wanna explain a concept to you. So it looks something like this, right? Now why, sorry, that should, that should go through, uh, you get the idea, it should go through there, right? All right, so why is, why is three and negative two? Why are these two numbers? Why are they critical values? Well, the idea here is, at the zeros of any curve at all, at zeros of any curve, it is possible for that curve to change sides. So it's positive here, it becomes negative at the zero. This two, negative two, that is the change point. It is possible for it to change. Now, it won't always be like this. For example, you might have a curve which looks something like this, right? And let's say that's negative three. Now, even though this is a zero, it hasn't changed sign. Right, it's, it's positive here, and it's still positive there. It's possible to have a curve like this. The idea, however, is this is a critical point. It is a zero, it is a critical point. The curve may change sign. It's possible for it to change sign. So, this is a critical point. So, what do we do? Step one, we factorize, and these are critical points. We will test, is the, ch is the sign changing at this point? That's why we find the critical, uh, critical values, because it might change, and then we have to check, and I guess that's what the rest of the thing is. We identify critical values, and then we check. You know, we mark any critical values on the number line, note the intervals thereby created, and then we test. All right, so for example, over here, we did this question. These are the critical values, negative two and three. We mark them into a number line. Now you have three regions. You have, you know, more than three. You have numbers more than three. You have in between negative two and three, and you have less than negative two. You have three solutions, and graphically speaking, that would correspond to, that would correspond to something like this. Right, you have that, that you have that region here, more than three. You have this in between region, and you have that region. Of course, uh, we're going to because we don't have this. We're assuming you don't know how to do it graphically. We're going to keep. We're going to you know forget about the graphical method. We know the solution. We can see it, but let's just forget that for a second. Okay, so we have three regions. So this, this is the interval, uh, this is the critical value, three and negative two. And once we have plotted these critical values in onto a number line, we can see that there are three regions. That region there, this region in the middle, and that region there. Okay, and now we are going to, what we are going to do is we are going to sub in values for each region. And the idea here is you pick any number in that region, and you pick any number in this region, you pick any number in that region there, and you substitute that value into either this or this, either of those two. And you check, is the inequality true? Is the inequality true? And if, if it's true for one value in a region, then it's true for every value in that region. So let's say we substitute in four, and the inequality is true. Then it'll be true for that whole region. This inequality will be true for the whole region. That will be a solution. Um, let's try, okay? So for example, we just need to check one value in each region. We're gonna check one value up more than three, a value less than three but more than negative two, and a value less than negative two. So let's check for region x is more than 3. We're going to sub in 10. We'll sub in 10 into this equation here. So we'll do 10 plus 2 times 10 minus 3. Okay? And is that, we're testing, is it less than 0? Is that less than 0? Well, it's a positive number, isn't it? Positive number less than 0? No. Positive number is more than, more than 0. And therefore, that is false in that region. Therefore, we can cross off this. We can cross off that region. That region is not a solution to this inequality. 
Now we test the next region for the middle region, right? We're gonna test zero. And I guess uh, it's always a good idea to test zero whenever possible, because it makes it a lot easy. If you substitute zero in here, you'll see this one gets wiped out. This wipes out. It's just two times negative three, which is really easy to do. You don't have to do it. Two times negative three is negative six. Is negative six? Is negative six less than zero? Well, yes, it is. It's a negative number. Negative numbers are less than zero. Now for the final region, we have to use a number in. We have to substitute a number that is less than negative two. Now, a quick tip, you don't actually have to sub in a number. You can sub in hypothetical numbers as well. For example, we're going to sub in a hypothetical very large negative number. So look, let's look over here. If you have a very large negative number plus two, it'll still be a very large negative number. So that is going to be a negative, big negative number there, right? multiplied by a yeah, big negative number, but it still be an even bigger negative number. Point is, it's a negative number. Negative times negative is positive, isn't it? So negative times negative is positive. Is a positive number less than zero? No, a positive number cannot be less than zero. Positive numbers are, by definition, more than zero. Therefore, it is not true in this. This inequality is not true in that region. We checked it was, it was not true in that region, and it was true for that region. So our solution is very easy, right? It's in between those two points, those two critical values. So that region, that's how we draw it on the number line. We'll draw an empty circle here, an empty circle here. Why is it an empty circle? Because it was a strict inequality. If it was an equality, something like, you know, if it was x you know, less than or equal to something or other, then we would shade in this circle there. But because it was that only or this only, we draw an empty circle and then we shade in the rest of the region. Anyway, so we said it was true for that region. How do we write this algebraically? X is here, it's less than negative three, uh, less than three, and it is more than negative two. And that would be our algebraic way to write the solution. And we're done, very straightforward. Um, so check your understanding, do this question, pause the video, do this question, see how you go. Remember, move everything to the left, factorize, plot in the critical values and test each region. And I'm assuming you've paused and I will say the solution now. So, move everything to the left, factorize, draw a number line and graph the critical points. We have three regions. I'm going to test each region. All right, so, you know, we test the first region. X is less than negative three. We imagine a very large negative number. So for a very large negative number, plus three, it'll still be a negative number. It'll be negative multiplied by very large negative minus one will be negative times negative. Negative times negative is positive. Is a positive number more than zero? Yes, it's true in this region, right? It's true in that region. <laughs> Similarly, test this. We can't test zero, so we're going to test zero. Three times negative one is negative three. Is a negative number more than zero? No, negative number is not more than zero, therefore it's false in this region. Last time we test this region here, we have a very large positive number plus three, it'll be positive, times a very large positive number minus one, it'll be positive as well. Positive times positive is a big positive number, which is more than zero. Positive numbers are more than zero, it's true in this region. Therefore, we can write our solution, x is more than one, more than or equal to one. Remember, we are not dealing with a strict inequality, we have more than or equal to here. So, this, all of that, and all of this region there. And algebraically write like this, we draw this on the exam paper. And this is the solution on a number line. All right, another question, give it a go again. Um, okay, I'm assuming that you have given this question a go. So let's go through it together. Step one, move everything to the left, then factorize, we've done so. Find the critical values. Now, I'm assuming you know how to find the critical values, obviously. X is equals to zero and X is equals to three. What will make that whole thing zero? That's how you find the critical values. Subbing in zero, X equals zero, will make this zero. And that zero times anything is zero, so therefore that's one critical value. And X equals to three will make that zero. And obviously zero times anything is zero, so that's another critical value. Anyway, we've got the two critical values. We plot it onto a number line, we have our three regions. Region one, region two, region three. 
So we pick a number in each region and we test that region. So we test a very large negative number and negative number squared will be positive, right? Times negative uh, because a large negative number minus three will be negative number, right? Positive times negative is negative. And negative is not more than zero, so it is not true in this region. Then we test the region in between. Uh, we're gonna pick a value from within the region. Uh, one, let's pick one for example. So four times one squared, which is one. So four times one times negative two is negative eight. Is negative eight more than zero? No, it is not more than zero, it's less than zero. And lastly, we look at the last remaining region. We sub in a very large positive number. Look, if you're getting confused by subbing in a large hypothetical, large negative, hypothetical, large positive, that's okay. Or you can just sub in a number that you're familiar with. So you can sub in negative one for this region, sub in one for this region, sub in four for this region, and use a calculator and just 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 check. And, you know, you'll be, you'll still get the right answer. Uh, this just saves a bit of time. It's a bit of a shortcut. So if you can understand the way it works, it's 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 good for you. You know, like it it'll save you a bit of time. Um, if you want to understand but you don't, you are more than welcome to ask me on Slack, and I'll be happy to you know try and uh, slow down a bit and just explain what we're actually doing or you can think about it when I say large positive think like a million okay so for example over here let's sub in a million one million so a million squared a heck of a large number positive obviously and a million minus three it'll be around a million anyway so positive times a million which is positive positive times positive is more than zero will that number be more than zero so you have something like a billion times a million is it more than zero well yeah obviously it's more than zero right so it is true in this region so when i say a large positive number i mean like an insanely positive number you can even think of it as positive infinity that's not technically correct i guess but you get the idea right like infinity squared yeah, it's gonna be positive, right? Infinity minus three is still gonna be infinity. So infinity times infinity, is that more than zero? Of course it's more than zero. And that's why the inequality will hold true in this region. Now, if you remember, the critical values, the critical values are where the inequality is equal to zero, right? So what, what do we have right now? We have the inequality holds true in this region it does not hold true in that region, it does not hold true in this region, but it is zero at x is equal to zero because that was one of our critical values. So it's actually true, the inequality is true for, th for that small dot at that instant, even though it's not true in that region and it's not true in that region, it is true for x is equal to zero because four times zero squared zero, four times zero times negative three is zero. And is zero more than or equal to zero? Yes, zero is equal to zero. So it's true here. So we have an interesting solution. Um, we have that it is true for x equals to zero or x is more than or equal to three. And the reason I chose this particular question was because students tend to make um, the following mistake a lot. Um, you do like 30 questions, 40 questions, and you'll find that the solutions tend to alternate in regions. So for example, if this, if, if this region is a solution, in most questions, this region will not be a solution and this region will be a solution. Or this won't be a solution, this will be a solution, and this won't be a solution. Now, once you've done a, quite a few of these questions, you'll start to see a pattern and you'll start to make assumptions. Please don't make assumptions. You need to test each region, and you also need to think carefully about these critical values and whether these critical values meet that requirement, you know, make the inequality true at that critical value. Uh, so please test each region. Don't make assumptions. You need to be testing every single time. All right, so that's it for today. Just do the homework and best of luck.